Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hash It Out. I am your host, Joe Jiang. Today with me is Felix Mago. Welcome, Felix. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, you are with um, Space Metaverse. Could you uh, tell us a little bit of background about yourself and also about Space Metaverse? Sure. I'm uh, Felix. I'm in this for a pretty long time, actually. Um, started off in 2014, writing a book on Bitcoin, founded an academy in Germany for corporate education, moved on to um, have a great team in Thailand, relocated there, opened a consulting company. We brought Dash to Asia, um, scaling payment ecosystems all around Asia from Thailand to the Philippines to Indonesia, Korea, and so on. Um, and last year we founded a metaverse called Space. It's a social commerce metaverse. So the plan and there is really kind of to basically enable everybody to capture the new economic opportunity of the metaverse. It's a commerce focused metaverse. Um, and we have an approach for everybody to easily open a shop or a commercial activity, a ticketed event, a gallery, a concert, um, or a shop in no time. And we have an approach where basically you choose a template, you upload your inventory, you set your price, and you're ready to have a metaverse shop within like 15 minutes. Oh, cool. Um, so this this sounds like already kind of a mature economy of metaverse. But in terms of, um, let's say, infrastructure, in, from your evaluation, how ready is it? Well, it's working. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> We're live. It's working. So in that sense, it's uh, it's ready. How mature is it is another question. You know, once you're building a metaverse, you realize, and you come from crypto especially, you suddenly realize how complicated things are because suddenly you have to deal with all these game development issues <laughs> that is choosing an engine, animating characters, animating everything, having everything as a 3D graphic asset, which is just, you know, kind of coming from a crypto perspective, a pretty big headache, I would say. <laughs> but, you know, this is what it is. And right now there, you know, everybody's looking for cool gaming engines. The truth is it's uh, somewhat there, but it's not where we want it to be, meaning it's not really browser ready. It's not able, it's not possible that, you know, you um, in real time, stream interactions of thousands of people without really having very heavy hardware computers, meaning uh, in like just logging in with a browser on a mobile phone, you get to issues. And this is where I guess all of the metaverses are struggling right now. So I guess if you're building a metaverse, you have to do somewhat a trade-off. Um, and for us, that was always very clear to say, you know, we need to be live. We need to get this out. We need to start experimenting with stuff. And we have had a very good response so far because we see high demand from merchants. We see high demand from users who would li like to check it out. So, you know, I guess the best choice to do is get it live and start iterating. Yeah, exactly. Um, which which blockchain or protocol your metaverse is built upon? The crypto layer is actually coming. We were ready to launch the token. Um, on Ethereum, the same as the land and uh, the NFT. So let me actually take a step back. Like yeah. what is actually the part, the Web3 part of the metaverse? Because I said, you know, it's different building blocks. One basically really is just the 3D part. It's completely non-crypto. It's like all the inventory <clears throat> sales management part, which is, you know, we could also describe as somewhat as a Shopify of the metaverse. Also that basically, you know, does not really have or does not really need anything Web3. Then it comes to kind of the payment where, you know, now we are starting to talk Web3 where of course you can use credit card payments, which we have, but of course you can kind of facilitate everything easier with Web3 payments, but also there you can build it your own, you can use your own token, or you use one of the payment providers to accept USDT, USDC instead of, um, instead of uh, credit card payments. But then where it really gets interesting is kind of the Web3 part, which basically consists of um, a token of uh, NFT land, of utility NFTs within the platform, and of a DAO. So, you know, these kind of four pillars basically make the Web3 part of the metaverse. And we are somewhat ready with most of these parts. The token is ready, the land is ready, the NFTs are conceptually ready 
Um, but the market is not where I want it to be. So, you know, we are kind of holding back because we don't want to release something that, you know, just hits sad people in a bear market. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's about to be there and it's about to be there on Ethereum. Yeah, I think the, well, we can, we can probably expand in, in the four pillars one, one by one, but I want to start by asking the question about payment. Because from your previous experience, you also, as you said, bring uh, Dash to Asia and uh, facilitate the token payment in the early days. Um, and actually, the peer-to-peer -peer, like payment was originally designed for Bitcoin. It is supposed to be a payment token, but a lot of issues that we've already experienced. Uh, in terms of metaverse payment, anything specific that are required and uh, difficulties um, and also kind of fiat transfer hurdles, anything that you could share with us? The good news is that compared to when we really started with Dash payment in 2016, 17, um, a lot has happened in the market. And especially what has happened is that we now have very compliant and globally active um, third-party providers where you can just plug in, right? You don't, it's it's somewhat, it's it's not frictionless to have peer-to-peer -peer payments. And the main reason for that, and that's really what we learned with Dash back in the day already, is that especially merchants, they, they don't want to deal or they don't, they have a high risk in accepting just crypto payments because it comes with a lot of strings attached. Not only is the currency usually a volatile one, but also the compliance, the bookkeeping, the tax reporting, all these things they have to do. It's just cumbersome for them to do it if they are alone. So one solution for that that has come up in the last years is all these service uh, uh, payment providers, MoonPay, Circle, and so on and so on. So there's like a lot of them, which basically takes away a lot of friction points from the merchant. So it's kind of somewhat mm -hmm. good to use these points, right? Um, I think the new trend that is coming right now, and this is what we are working on as soon as the token is live, is to have probably somewhat a web 2.5 approach, where you also try to take a lot of friction away, meaning you use crypto in the background. You, you have a process where you log in with an email address, you have kind of a custodial wallet that is, um, that is being created for you if you don't have one, and if you don't want to use one, where you can basically recover your key with the third party that is kind of also regulated that does the kyc that does all these things that you that you have to do and where at the end of the day you can kind of with the click of a button um make your choice what you want do you want that money is auto converted for you uh into stable coins into fiat into whatever you want or if you just want to keep the coins and put it on your ledger it's all possible so you know the freedom of choice with as uh, least friction points as possible, I think, is where crypto is going right now. Yeah. Do you see there is uh, a preference among the merchants? No, sorry. Um, any merchants would be more inclined to onboard with uh, matri uh, metaverse versus others? Look, everybody is right now very hyped about the metaverse, even though you know we got a few backlashes in the in the last weeks with with. Ah. like not so positive reporting but the truth is we we really see a high demand and everybody wants to try out metaverse everybody struggles to understand why or what to do and kind of comes up with you know kind of boring concepts to say we're doing the same in the metaverse but at the end of the day the way we are looking at it commerce in the metaverse is not just putting a 2d web experience in a 3d web environment where you know you you could go to amazon and you see a screen and you scroll down it's the same in amazon you're just standing in a 3d room now the way we imagine it is more kind of combined with marketing concepts where you do treasure hunts where you have marketing activities where you have people talking to i think there's a few fundamental differences that really make the experience different we all call it you know an immersive experience but what that actually means is you know like fill it with social life. So if I come and if I meet you in the metaverse and I see your avatar standing around there and I come to you and talk to you like we're doing right now, you know, voice to voice, it's already something very different than we start chatting or I'm using a chatbot. And you know these experiences with, with commerce and in the internet 
where this chat window pops up and you need like 10 minutes until the AI asks you, do you want to talk to an agent, right? So it's kind of a battle for me me versus the machine. When can I talk to a human, right? I think this is kind of some experience points that it brings back. And this is what we're exploring right now with merchants and they have a high interest. We have uh, like 50 plus merchants live. There is, I would say over 150, 200 um, waiting to get live. And we're really trying to make it as easy and frictionless as possible. So um, where are the merchants mostly based? Are they kind of more crypto friendly countries? Mm -hmm. Uh, they're actually based all over the place. It's all kind of um, different merchants that we have. It's t-shirt stores. We have a makeup store. We have a lot of artists. Um, so in fact, I can't say they're kind of Web3 native. They're just, you know, whatever cool brands. I think everything hipster, fashion, you know, some uh, young brands, I would say, are, are kind of very inclined, but also the big ones, you know, show high interest. Of course, when you are, you know, talking to these tier one brands, the uh, yeah, the stakes get higher. The corporate processes become more, you know, uh, complicated. Let's own, say the decision makers. You know, they don't want to do their own metaverse, but you know, it's like you. It's not the owner who is making the decisions. It's like you know, a whole hierarchy of people to ask for, and so on. That's normal normal big business right that's um, that it is what it is so it just takes longer for these sales cycles to come to fruition where you know the the easiest ones we have is like we know the owners or we talk to the owners they get the metaverse they already find it cool they are willing to try it out tomorrow so you know <laughs> that's kind of the uh, the thing that we are seeing right now but again we are providing right now a templated approach so you let's say you sell t-shirts you can go to space right now you open the builder tool you say i want to do a commerce experience it shows you like around 15 to 25 templates you can choose the template you upload your inventory of course you have to have the 3d assets which are kind of actually easy to get um, you upload the color schemes the prices the sizes you go into this shop you arrange what you want and bam, it's like 15 minutes later, you have your metaverse shop. We mm -hmm. even have a fulfillment facility already where we can ship physical goods around the world. And also one word for that, it's for physical goods, it's for digital goods. And we are about to release a digital tool that is kind of combining the physical and the digital world, mm -hmm. where basically you mint yourself a digital twin of your physical good. And then you can kind of do lol, all kind of fun activities with your digital good, right? You can have an access code embedded. You can have royalties for resale embedded. You can do all kinds of you know funny new uh, things with digitals. I understand. Um, that this kind of model reminded me that when when traditional business wanted to get into now we call it web two, but at the time, like I want to hop on internet, right? So we 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 get on the website, we, I, we create our own website. And the easier way to hop, hop on that is someone who is providing a template and say, just uh, for example, just input your menu, right? So this is um, a quick way to like teach them about metaverse. I, I would imagine like the, the whole process is going to be easier and teach people how to do that. But eventually um, the business model is going to adapt to what metaverse is really going to be about, um, even though we don't have a definite answer at this moment because NFTs and, and other stuff is going to be more complicated, I think. Oh. It's uh, like a company having their own website is one thing but probably they also need to adapt to having a facebook page or <laughs> or an app uh, to enrich their business model to fit into the internet age or mobile age um i think that's that's uh, like if correct me if i'm wrong like i i can i can make the comparison about how to move traditional business or even like online businesses to metaverse uh this is important first first step uh, of doing this yeah absolutely if i may add one one thing you know that i really think it's uh 
what what Web three is changing is that suddenly everybody is becoming like super global, right? I think for us, where we are the only branch in the world where where actually countries and you know being somewhere, having a nationality, and working for a company that is based somewhere has become like completely arbitrary, right? I I am where I want to be. I you know I work in the internet. My team is global. My my salary is paid in, in two seconds. It doesn't matter where I am, right? And I can now even cash out with a situation where I have a credit card that directly spends Bitcoin and converts it at the point of sale. No, I think this is the the Web three spirit that probably you and me are are living already, right? But there's a whole gap between you know people that are not there already. And this is where, where I see, you know, it's it's really taking off. And, and everybody who is in there immediately gets it. I think the metaverse is now another channel for everybody of us to capture basically the new a new opportunity on where you can work. Mm -hmm. Like it it tops it tops it even more, kind of what, what I just explained. Because right now I can go in there and you can all I don't know, you you're good in yoga, you can open a yoga school in in the next 15 minutes. And you can bring your community to write, you know, to do the first yoga session with like a camera. And you can have a global yoga session with all the long tail of the internet and become, you know, the first famous metaverse yoga influencer that is out there. I really believe the job markets are kind of being disrupted with that. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is what I've already seen in the web too. But again, it's just, you know, for now it's a communication on Zoom. It's me looking at you on a, on a camera, you know, we can turn the, this into a more immersive experience by avatars, by video avatars, 3D videos and all that. Yeah, uh, but that, that on that point, also, it is challenging to the existing everything framework, regulation, taxation, uh, like visa, <laughs> everything that existing that we're familiar with uh, is kind of challenging to that. Um, even though, like, that's my personal experience, even though that I'm kind of a digital nomad, but still, like, when it comes to the resident, uh, which country you're from, uh, or which taxpayer you're from, uh, if you're running as, as a, a small business, as a merchant on Metaverse, how does this country tax you is going to be the next topic, I think, and, and uh, they will never come up with an answer if there is a business model already there like for, for for them to like the regulators is not going to test it out for you right yeah you know i think these questions it's you, you put this into existing framework it's not like we need to invent a new framework right me as a company can hire somebody as a freelancer out of africa right. putting giving me an invoice right and they're responsible to pay their tax and i'm the same responsible to pay my taxes because i'm a an entity regulated in, you know, wherever, Poland, Switzerland, you know, name it. These frameworks are already there. So far, it's just very complicated to have this approach where we say, okay, we have all to sit together in one office here in, I don't know, in Germany or in, uh, in Switzerland, and I have to get the papers to bring someone here. Like, this is cumbersome. It just needs kind of all these processes going to embassies and blah, blah, blah fact of the matter is we don't need that anymore right mm -hmm. i'm meeting my team in the metaverse in a metaverse room you know there in africa in uh, canada in whatever it doesn't doesn't even matter it's really just arbitrary yeah it's well in the people's interaction is going to be different definitely like we've already witnessed uh, the metaverse version of concert uh which is a, a huge a huge success or step forward already. So that's something that we're going to experience. Um, yeah. So, like from from your pro project's pro point of view, like any any f like, what's the next step? Uh, exciting plans for twenty twenty three, despite how how stressful twenty twenty two is. But like, um, the the industry is still thriving. Yeah. True, you know, I, I'm happy. I see a lot of people building. That uh, is still motivating a lot. And there is, you know, if you go to events, there is 
not any bear market feelings like in the last bear market where everybody was super depressed. I think everybody's still hyped and everybody still was even more than ever convinced that this is going somewhere. Um, so for space specifically, I really want to kind of get all the Web3 things started. We have um, the token sale coming as soon as the market is ready. We have a land sale coming, maybe a few words to the land sale, because I think we really have some innovative um, things that we, are, um, that we are planning right now. One of them is to have a collateralized land. So basically we're building a DeFi version of land that nobody has done before so far, where we say, okay, we sell land with a 33% collateral that is going mm -hmm. into a treasury. So all land is basically backed up with the stable coin that always can be pulled and where you can now build money markets on your land. We have a concept that this collateral is increasing with the commercial activity that is happening on the land. We are exploring kind of rental models. We are exploring a way um, to gamify the land as well, where basically your activity within the metaverse is contributing to the level that your land has and the different perks that you get and the bonuses that you get when you actively are a member of the metaverse. Mm -hmm. um, also NFTs are coming, utility NFTs, where basically the utilities have, um, the, the NFTs have utility inside and outside the metaverse. So imagine something like a club membership card, um, a restaurant or a shopping discount mm -hmm. that you can get when you go to a physical store showing your NFT that's actually a space NFT. We already have launched a metaverse alliance with all the big other metaverses and box, Decentraland, CryptoVoxels and so on. It's called the OMA3, the Open Metaverse Alliance that is really um, going into our uh, uh, taking care about standards in the metaverse to take your assets around different metaverses uh, to talk about ethical standards and so on. So there's a million things coming. It's, we're, we're really building a monster. It's not getting boring here. That's yeah, that's that sounds too much for, for one year. Uh, but actually, you, you you mentioned something that I'm curious about. And that actually was, was would be my next question. Like, what do you see the landscape of metaverse is going to be? Because we, mm. as you said, we we saw decentraland. We have we have set box, um, and uh, the the whole metaverse supposed to be interoperable, right? Like it's it's permissionless or. Uh, the NFTs should be interchangeable into different places. Um, like, is is each one competing with each other, or like, as you said, there is a pass alliance. What? How would it look like? Let's say in twenty twenty three. I think one thing that definitely is coming that for me that there's no other way is that uh, what we have seen with crypto and DeFi. The DeFi is now coming into the NFT space. Actually, that has or that is already happening. The DeFi, NFT, and Metaverse are evolving somewhat together. Mm -hmm. That, for example, you start to have or to realize what what things you can do with NFTs. Meaning, you can put IP rights on it. You can distribute music on it. You can embed or encode all kinds of perks, like I mentioned, membership passes, discount codes. But you can also build like a whole banking system on collateralized treasury and all these things. So I think it's really kind of mingling together. And there is uh, the new kid metaverse in town where you can now, you know, experiment with stuff in 3D, which is super exciting and which is frankly also not kind of a completely new thing. It's just new that we have NFTs and digital items in it. But I mean, we're playing World of Warcraft since what, 2005. So, you know, there is a lot of uh, history in big gaming worlds and big gaming communities that are actually based or centered around a whole economic activity and kind of somewhat balanced out. I mean, just look at the, you know, the big iron forge market in world of warcraft that was like a huge ecosystem where people started to arbitrage the markets on gold and rare swords but i mean it's just so obvious now right that you can build secondary markets on the same principle yeah definitely it's um 
Well, metaverse, people are talking about it as if it is a standalone stuff uh, next to DeFi or next to NFT or next to GameFi. But actually, metaverse is is the next version of internet right it's it's supposed to be yeah. have something mirrored there uh all the business model being mirrored there as well it includes finance includes properties <laughs> game industry as well so it is more comprehensive in terms of what can it what it <laughs> contains but now when people are talking about metaverse it's uh it's it sounds like it's more like just a exchange of goods and digital goods uh but yeah, it's it's going to take a long while to develop into what what the internet stage has has become. But I like your point that you're you're putting DeFi in it already because finance is going to be an innate feature of of metaverse from that from yeah. Yeah, it's kind of always also the same the same history in crypto that that I said. Like, there's a pattern. Let's let's put it like that, right? There's like all these different blockchains and. We have like a token that is like the, you can transfer and you can pay stuff on it, but it becomes kind of the the asset to build the whole money market on it. And then we see kind of you know a DEX, uh, a lending protocol, yeah. arbitra uh, uh, leverage trading. It's all kind of these building blocks that you can just plug and play together. You know, it's kind of inevitable and obvious that that this is coming now. Yeah, and, so, and you know, yeah. I, you know, no wonder it makes that, just uh, a lot of sense. Yeah, no wonder that the crypto industry is more about finance because it's just very easy. You just refer to what traditional finance has been doing, and it because it has value. Um, so it's it's as I said, plug and play. Yeah, that's that's where we are now. Um, so uh, finally, was uh, when is your token issuance day generation uh, pipeline? Is there any anything that we can expect for? Um, it's a matter of us pressing a button <laughs> at this point. We, you know, we did our homework and, and B, B is for builders market. So, uh, I'm, I just want to make sure everything is ready. All the documents are ready. We're, you know, it's, you, you can't fight the market is what I have learned in crypto. It is what it is, right? Everybody's depressing. now. it's Christmas is coming. Let's wait. I'm sure things will be better when the FUD is over and when, yeah, I mean, it's also a bit of a house of cardish what has happened, which, you know, is also kind of the same story in every financial crisis somehow that people are over leveraged. And if you're over leveraged, you will pay the price at one point. Yeah. That's, that's what happened starting from May this year, like since start to show off and the, the risk is, is emerging. Um, yeah, but I still like at this period of time it's also good to test the water. I'm I'm always saying like um crypto industry in terms of adoption, we're still kind of in the earliest adoption age. Adoption age is far from like majority adoption. So with 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 some adopters in this metaverse space, at least we can test a lot of errors at this at this stage. Yeah, I don't know if that's good or bad, but, but it is what it is. Huh? I guess we all have to learn our lessons, and sometimes it's also a, a, a painful lesson. But, you know, I think it's important for every business to kind of learn these dynamics, to um, have their security systems in place, to make sure that you have runway, you know, to just be, um, yeah, to just act clever in kind of this environment. Yeah, but um, that there's one truth, which is every financial crisis is being saved by the builders who are actually generating value to the to the society and economy, right? Yeah, and to be fair, there's also a lot of projects where it's arguable where the value is. Let's put it like that. So well, you know, you have to try to. <laughs> It's also not completely new, you know. I've learned that that in crypto, it's okay to build to build a product that is a machine to machine product, and that is fair, right? But if you want to build a whatever to customer product, you have to make sure that that this is something where you know where you find the customers. And frankly, in the metaverse, this is a big challenge because nobody knows what that is, right? I feel we are extremely early, and it's more like kind of for the pioneers right now to try it out. 
rather than everybody already has a metaverse account. And, you know, we all have seen this, uh, uh, the movie where, you know, we are sitting in the metaverse already and, and having all these machines around us, but it's not there yet somewhat. So, you know, I yeah. think COVID has uh, changed it for me a bit because I had some you know drinks with friends in the metaverse all over the world. Oh. It was kind of fun and a new experience. So you know, I can just recommend everybody who didn't do it. I think the magic moment comes when you enter it and when you talk to somebody you know as their alter ego, that is kind of this emotional attachment that you suddenly get to it and say, Oh, this is cool, this is fun. Well, this this so, should be you know, this should be the starting point of an adoption. <laughs> like it sounds yeah, sounds exactly. very attractive. And uh, if you want to have an avatar in the metaverse, just have a wallet and step one, two, three, bang, then done, right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah, just like having a Zoom account. How do you do? You have a Zoom account first. You need to have a an email account. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. It's uh, it's very glad chatting with you, Felix. Um, I hope everything goes well and uh, let us know when the token is uh, is available. Or um, please send me like step one, two, three. Let's let's mm -hmm. next chat. Let's have it on in uh, in metaverse. Yeah, perfect. Really go into tryspace.com, try it out, start building a room or just start entering a room, walk around. Maybe you didn't have a you don't don't have a Christmas gift yet. I don't think it's too late or probably it's it's getting late but do it now <laughs> step mm -hmm. in there get a present for your friends you know they will be fascinated to, uh, to where it come from <laughs> yeah. exciting thank you thank, thank you, you for having me yeah. great questions if you want to reach me felix mago crypto on twitter find me on linkedin felix mago m-a-g-o hope to see Bye. you there why or meet I... you in the metaverse. Let's see you. Why am I writing it down? I'm just going to swap the replay. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> bye bye. Have a good one. See you. Bye bye.